Hey peeps, what's up? Manchi here, back with another video. And in this video, I'm going to show you how you can design a sealed or a closed subwoofer box in Hornresp. Now, I do recommend that you watch part one of our Hornresp tutorial series because that is going to show you how you can enter your subwoofer TS parameters and some information about this ANG, EG, and RG. Link to that video can be found in the description of this video and it is also going to pop up or show as a message on the top right of your screen right now. So first things first, we're going to open up Hornresp and we're going to say add for a new project. Then we're going to go into file and say paste driver from database. We have already saved the Dayton Ultimax 2 12 inch over there. So that is the one which we're going to select and then say paste. Then for ANG, we need to use 2.0. Next up, you can give it a comment or a name, whatever you want to give it. And let us say we want to give it the name that this is the sealed box design. Now do note when you're designing a sealed or a closed subwoofer box in Hornresp, the only thing which you're concerned about is VRC, LRC, FR and TAL. Everything else over here, these things S1 through F45, you can ignore along with VTC and ATC. Next thing you need to know if your subwoofer is single voice coil or dual voice coil and if it is dual voice coil, how are you going to connect it? So if you're going to connect it in series, then you will double click on BL and this means your subwoofer is dual voice coil connected in series if you want to connect it in parallel you're going to select blp double click it will change to blp double click one more time this means that this is a single voice coil subwoofer then if you are planning on designing your closed or sealed subwoofer box for more than one sub then you need to change nd so if i hover my mouse over this one you will see on the bottom it tells us nd single driver double click on this and now you can change it and here then you need to know whether you're going to connect your subs in series or in parallel so let us say you want to connect two subwoofers in parallel you're going to say drivers in parallel change this to two if you're going to connect them in series then you're going to change this to two or you can go up to a maximum of nine subs in series and I think a maximum of nine in parallel. For the purpose of this video, we're going to do it just for one sub. Next up, you're going to go into tools and here then you're going to go into design wizard and you're going to select closed box. Notice as soon as I select closed box, it is going to ask me, are you sure about the value of ANG and your SD, which is your cone area and your subwoofer TS parameters, are they correct? We're going to say yes. And notice that everything on the top part S1 through F45 automatically changed to zero as did your FR, TAL, VTC, ATC. You only have VRC and LRC which I'm going to tell you what they are. Do you want to mask your chamber resonances? We're going to select no. So this is our response graph which we are getting. QTC is 0.72. We'll talk more about QTC later in this video. But for starters, what is VRC? VRC is the volume of your box. And this is the recommended graph or the recommended size from Hornresp. You can, of course, change it. But VRC is the volume of your box. And this here is in liters. LRC is the length or say the depth of your box. And this is in centimeters. FR is the airflow resistivity if you're going to line up your chamber or fill it up or say fill up your subwoofer box with some polyfill. You can emulate or simulate that as well. The unit for this is MKS rails per meter and then TAL is going to be the thickness of that material. This needs to be in centimeter. Me personally, I do not use this. Then you will notice you have something called default alignment. So you have two alignments available for a sealed or a closed subwoofer box in Hornresp. You have the default one where QES is not limited. Then you have the leech alignment, which you can change to by double click on this. Now in leech alignment, QES cannot be greater than 0 0.78. And if you want to know more about leech alignment, you'll have to read the introduction to electroacoustics and audio amplifier design book. But we're going to double click and switch over to our default alignment. QTC is 0. 0.72. Important thing to note over here is that your VRC as you can see is in liters. So 
let us see what 92 liters is so that my dear friends is approximately 3.2 cubic foot which is a pretty big box now the best part about horn resp is that you can actually change your volume right here using the slider and you will see the response also change and the qtc is also changing important thing to note here is that designing a subwoofer box closed sealed in car audio world is about compromises as well because you do not have unlimited trunk space and some people do not want to give up a lot of trunk space but they still like some base so do keep that in mind so let us say we are going with say a 30 or a 40 liters box now QTC is 0 0.87. I know you're going to ask me, hey Manji, how good or how bad or what should the QTC be? I found a pretty good link about it, which is linked in the description of this video, but here it is. So 0 0.5 QTC is critically damped. Your SPL is lowered and the enclosure is pretty huge. As we can see that as we increase the enclosure size, the QTC goes down 0 0.707 is considered the optimum alignment by most designers because it gives excellent transient response low base performance and power handling and the flattest curve before f3 the enclosure might be fairly large i think in car audio world you can go up to 0 0.8 0 0.9 qtc you won't notice much of a difference but again that is my personal opinion but let us say we are going to reduce the size of this box so you will notice as i reduce the size of the box i am losing out on my low end base my extension is not that good and of course the response is also not flat i'm not saying everybody wants a flat response you know sometimes a little bit of oomph in the 40 to 50 hertz range can be pretty good to the ears and that is what i personally like but again it is all about your personal preference and that is something which you can check here in horn resp by using this slider and in real time you will get feedback as to what the response is going to be so here it is this is qtc point seven let us try to you know increase this a little bit more so that we can get in the point seven one ish range so here it is a hundred liters box now hundred liters is like let's see how much that is so hundred liters is three and a half cubic foot which is almost like the whole trunk of a sedan so i'm not sure if you are ready to give up that amount of space but if you are then yes feel free to go for this alignment but if i were designing a sealed box for this subwoofer you know and the only space i have is like 45 or something 50 liters then 0.84 qtc will be good enough now another thing to note over here is that right now this is your frequency response with just one watt of power so you will go into power make sure power is selected over here and then we're going to say other now you will see ang and eg eg is the important thing over here that tells you how much voltage you are pushing so horn resp works on voltage and it's very easy to calculate it so in our case this dayton audio ultimax is 800 watts rms and this is a dual voice coil subwoofer at 2 ohms each coil is 2 ohms so let us say we are going to connect our coils in series right series will give us a total or a final impedance of 4 ohms and if you connect it in parallel you will get 1 ohm now 800 watts and we are saying our final impedance is going to be 4 ohms so we're going to open calculator and say 800 watts multiply that with our final impedance in my case 4 and we're going to press equal to so 3200 and you're going to do a square root of this which comes out to 56.56 now eventually when you set gains on your amp this is the number you're going to use if you are 
wanting to push 800 watts to this Ultimax sub at 4 ohms. So EG needs to be 56.56. So we're going to start increasing EG till we reach 56.56. All right, we are at 56.7 and here it is. You can see at 56.7 at say 30 hertz, you are going to be at 107 dB. Similarly, if you are at say 57 or 55, you're going to be at 113 dB. So this is pretty cool feature which is present in HornResp and why did we plug in the voltage we plugged in the voltage because the other thing which we need to check is our x max that is are we exceeding the x max at 800 watts and 4 ohms or not so for that select this power and we will go into displacement and bam here it is this is our displacement or x max so at 800 watts 4 ohms impedance we are peaking at say 26 hertz and we are at 18 mm of x max the x max on this data and ultimax is 22 so how far can we go how much more power can we push let's check that out so here it is i'm at 66.70 eg and when i move my mouse cursor over this i am at 21.5 21.6 mm on the top over here this is the displacement or the x max and we are not reaching 22 which means 66 volts is what we can push so let us collect the watts in this case so let us say 66 we're going to multiply it by 66 which gives us almost 4300 right and then we're going to divide this by 4 because that is our impedance so you can actually push easily 1100 watts to this Dayton Ultimax 2 subwoofer in this specific sealed box before you hit X max that is a lot of power you're like 200 watts or maybe 300 watts above your 800 watt RMS rating and once you're happy with the results all you have to say is save and bam here it is you have now successfully designed a closed or a sealed subwoofer box in horn resp and you've checked out how much power you can actually push and then if i select calculate now and say no for masking this is another place where you can see all those things so diaphragm displacement you can see over here we are not reaching 22 you can select window one more time and then you can select your phase response your group delay now all of these things are not of a big concern when you're designing a sealed or a closed subwoofer box these come into the picture when you're designing a ported or a vented box and of course we are going to cover how you can design a ported or a vented subwoofer box for your subs in horn resp so stay tuned for that and hopefully these two videos of how to you know enter your subwoofer parameters and then how to design a sealed box in horn res give you some experience and some hands-on and eventually makes it easier for you to use horn resp as your primary subwoofer enclosure designing software